Napping is a good one. Napping is a good one. <laughs> Napping. That's my favorite question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so today we're just, uh, the Lunch and Learn is about summertime fun and safety. So again, I'm Sarah Siegel and I'm from UW Extension. So we are one group that did not have to move to Rubac. So we're still on first floor here in the courthouse. Um, and today we're just going to talk about summertime being here and how that affects our wellness habits related to, uh, most people think about physical activity, but then also your eating habits. And then also here in Wisconsin, what are we known for? So we'll, I had you share your favorite moments, but then we'll talk a little bit about what Wisconsin's kind of known for that can help with your wellness activities um, and can help but probably hurt some of your um, eating habits for the summer. So just as kind of a reminder is as we go through these lunch and learns uh, related to wellness, they kind of all focus around, um, you've probably heard seven dimensions of wellness. This actually, uh, wheel that's up here is actually emphasizing eight parts of wellness. Um, so when Adam, which is your wellness coordinator, the health department, and I sit down and kind of pick your topics, we try to focus on what people traditionally view as a wellness topic, but then what are some other ones that we sometimes don't think are wellness habits. So you can see on the wheel, hopefully it's not too hard to see, is that your emotional wellness is important, environmental, financial is the eighth one that we've added in intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual. So we'll talk a little bit about today how some of those wellness, um, dimensions of wellness become more, I guess, of a focus in the summertime, just because it's a little bit easier for us in Wisconsin to um, think about positive wellness related to some of them as it gets warm outside. So family fun wellness activities, um, what can you do? So I just threw a couple examples up here, but then we'll talk about one of the handouts that you got today is to try an activity with physical activity um, related into it. So we'll use these two lovely ladies that are at River Black now that walked over here instead of driving. Um, and so I know as extension, we have different meetings that take place in the health department. So we plan also on walking as much as possible because parking might be a nightmare. Um, but that obviously is going to change when it gets cold outside. I may not be as willing to walk over there for a meeting. Um, so just if you have a family or not, just walking and biking instead of taking a car. So we gave some work examples. Um, there's a lot more people who are willing to walk on their breaks um, in the summertime than they are in the wintertime. So we usually see more people outside of the courthouse walking around than we do in the wintertime walking the hallways. Um, the other thing is a lot of people will park somewhere for a family activity and then just walk to multiple other activities that take place. So a lot of times downtown businesses or towns will have festivals that take place so you can park in one area and then you can walk to multiple parts of it. Instead of downtime in front of the TV, have downtime outside under the stars or watching the sunset. So again, if you have little kiddos, there's that downtime you probably have at the end of the day. Um, to kind of wrap, get them ready for bed. So just doing some of that stuff outside um, instead of in front of the TV. Um, so encouraging them to get outside and read, take a nap outside instead of uh, always doing some of those activities in the house. And then my plate, my wins, be an active family handout for ideas. That's what I didn't give you. So it's sitting over on the table over there. Um, I, I don't know what color it is to be exact. Um, so it gives you lots of different ideas of what you can do um, as a family uh, to promote again. That one kind of focuses more on physical activity, not all the dimensions of wellness. The other one that we have for you that we came up with as extension is this bright green one that I gave you. And this one is just all about fun family activities that you can do in Wood County. So we work with Head Start groups and other uh, school districts and things, and so we wanted a resource, or I wanted a resource for parents to use about what do I do now in the summertime when my kids are off of school. Um, but looking at it, it's not just for kids, it's for adults as well. So the first one is just about visiting all our parks and beaches. Um, so our parks department, obviously working for the county, that's really easy for us to access. Um, and so take advantage of those parks, beaches, and playgrounds that we have. We do have some uh, swimming, outdoor swimming pools still in Wood County, but we're, um, I think Marshfield is the only one that's still outside. But then we have our indoor pools, again, but check for, um, well, the Sarah Park one is outside. But again, check for times because sometimes they're down for maintenance. 
Um, so those would be things that you can access. The libraries have tons of programs, so I think sometimes people feel that library programs are very kid heavily based. And actually in both of our bigger libraries, so Macmillan and Marshfield, they're very adult based as well. So Monday is always movie day, um, but then they have lots of bands and concerts and authors that come in, plays, so they have lots of things going on. Um, we're fortunate to have two zoos in our county, so the Marshfield one and then the Rapids one. Both of them do lots of programming. Um, I'm not sure about the Rapids one, but the Marshfield one is free. Is the Rapids one free? Okay, so um, both of those, you can have a picnic, you can do lots of different things at the zoo. Um, the Raptors baseball game, so we were just there last night. That's another um, activity. Um, and then again, children's playgrounds. And then the last one was just to be a tourist of your town. Um, someone had said that to me or had it on a handout that I received, and it kind of stuck with me, is that sometimes we don't think about all the things that our town has to offer, and um, we don't always take advantage of it. And I have was born and raised in Wisconsin Rapids, and there's still things that have changed throughout the years that I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was happening. So one example would be the Cranberry Blossom Festival has just expanded majorly into all of these things that I didn't even realize sometimes that go on. So um, I think the biggest change is they moved the carnival down by the river, kind of by the Tribune building. Um, but then I think they have a beer and cheese event or wine and cheese event that's new this year I think um, but they're always adding different activities and some of them are more kids based some of them are more adult based so I gave you some websites that just will help you find out what some of those fun activities are and then on the back is if you have young kids um, just to help you with boredom because after a while you're gonna hear I'm bored I just want to watch TV so um, what can you do with your kids to kind of keep them busy um, again, just be a tourist of your town and your state. Um, so I'm not plugging anything, but I bought this book. It's, it's at the Cheese Factory just because they're in it. It's called The Wisconsin Bucket List. Um, so it's written by a lady, um, and she just came up with her top things to do in Wisconsin. Um, and again, it's sold at Dairy State Cheese because they're one of her uh, stops. But it has just so many different things in that, again, I didn't know about. Obviously, go to a Packer game is one of them, a Brewer game. Um, but number 49 is the water ski show at Wazicha here. Um, and then, like I said, Dairy State's in here. So it's just neat. She has it set up. She gives you a little bit of info about the activity. And then the back, she has um, kind of a list to, uh, where you can check them off about what to do. And then all I did was stuck some other things in here when I come across them of things to do. So again, I'm not plugging it, but it's just kind of a neat resource of different things that you can do um, in Wisconsin. And then the other one that I just wanted to mention today um, for fun activities is the Road Trippers app. Um, it was recommended to me uh, by a friend and my family is actually using it right now. So they uh, are in Disney World or Florida um, and they, drove there. So they were using the Road Trippers app on their, their trip down and their trip back. So what state they're in, what can you find, where can you stop. They use some places that they wanted to stop ahead of time, but this will also help you along your travels. So um, if you're interested in, in traveling that way by car, um, that's an app and it was a free app as well. Okay, so you had to write down what was one of your favorite activities. So just for something different, does somebody want to share what your favorite activity was? Motorcycle riding. Motorcycle riding. <coughs> so the fair. The fair. Up there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want to share? Campfires. Fishing. Fishing. That was fun for me too. Yep, so mine were cookouts, picnics, which we'll talk a little bit about, um, fishing with the family, and then the Central Wisconsin State Fair was another one. So um, all things that are very summer-based. Another topic for today is the food safety part of summer. Um, so I gave you a couple handouts related to food safety. One of them is the barbecue and food safety, um, cooking temperatures, and then the bright blue one is about being food safe. Um, something for summertime, which we hear a lot either at the farmer's market or we get a lot of calls about, is how do I prepare, cook, and eat safe foods during the summertime? So with the cookouts and the campfires that take place, 
Uh, how do I make sure that I'm still being food safe? What temperature should I cook my meat to on the grill? Um, temperature is something that people don't think about. We often go by color when we're grilling different meat products on the grill or different foods. How long can I keep my food out at a cookout? And then the last one would be how long should I keep leftovers? And leftovers we'll talk about today, leftovers meaning in your refrigerator in your house, but then also leftovers if you are camping or if you are out at a cookout. What do I do with the leftovers? So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is just this bright blue sheet. It has to do with what we call being food safe. And it comes from the USDA and the Food Safety um, Commission is they focus on four words. So the clean, separate, cook, and chill. And this is their graphic. And then on this blue sheet, it also emphasizes each of them in their top 10 tips. So for clean, we wanna just make sure people have clean hands, using soap and water, sanitized surfaces, um, cleaning, um, clean sweep refrigerator uh, foods once a week. So making sure you're cleaning out your refrigerator and not keeping leftovers for longer than a week. Um, and depending on what the product is. And then keeping your appliances clean and then rinsing your produce. So we'll talk about farmer's markets later, just making sure that you are rinsing your vegetables before you um, use them or cook them. Related to this is you're gonna be in some summer situations where bathrooms and washing hands are gonna be a little bit difficult. Um, and some bathroom situations like porter potties and things like that get a little like, you know, can be a little gross at times. So just remembering to keep sanitizer with you um, and just trying to wash your hands as much as possible. Um, sanitizing surfaces is really hard when we're barbecuing. So again, just trying to bring as many um, clean equipment, utensils that you can with you so you don't have to worry about washing them as you transition throughout your cooking. And then the last one, most uh, three and four are mostly related to inside of your house. And then the produce we'll talk about later. The separate is a big one when we are uh, grilling out. So as we, in a minute, talk a little bit about the steps for safe grilling practices. Uh, the big thing is that a lot of times people go grocery shopping before they head to a cookout possibly. So making sure that things are kept separate and cold as you travel to wherever you're going to to have your cookout. And then separating foods when preparing and serving. So again, as you're at a barbecue, one more plate that you have to bring. So having the plate that the raw product was on and then a plate that the clean product is going on. So a lot of this may be common sense, but we see just a lot of times in cookouts, we forget things and then some of these food safety <laughs> habits kind of get swept under the rug. And then the last one is cooking and chilling. So using a food thermometer uh, when you're cooking, cooking to a safe eternal temperature and then keeping food safe um, keeping foods at a safe temperature. For summertime, the normal rule of thumb is that you can keep foods out um, as you're serving them or as you're eating them for up to two hours. As the temps reach closer to 90, I would say between 85 degrees and 90, that goes down to an hour. So as we think about cookouts and time at the beaches or on picnics, is you have to have a thought process of how long your food is out and how you're gonna keep it cold or how are you gonna keep it hot. So uh, those are the things just as, as our temperatures heat up that that time shrinks down. So we kind of really push the two hours, but again, if it's 85 to 90 degrees, it's only an hour. And again, so having coolers, having you know, things to wrap your food in to, make you, to make sure that they um, are staying hot if they need to stay hot or cold if they need to stay cold. The other thing I just wanted to go through today is for summertime, um, is often grill time, so all the different things that we can grill, and as we talk about farmer's markets, it's not just meat that we can grill, we can grill vegetables and lots of different things. Um, so storing food safely after purchase, so again, if it's storing it at home, making sure it's in the refrigerator or freezer. Um, if it is in a cooler because you're on your way, you just bought it and you're on your way to wherever your cookout is or wherever you're going to make sure that you have ice or the ice packs to keep it cold if it needs to be cold. Thawing safely, we tend to see a lot of people, or hear a lot of people, well, I'll just put it out on the counter to thaw it. Okay, just remember that thawing on a counter is not a safe practice. So you need to make sure you either put it in the refrigerator to thaw it, um, use it as part of the cooking process, or use a microwave are the ones. And we always hear people say, well, I can put it on the counter, it doesn't fully get, we're giggling over there, that it doesn't fully get defrosted, but just remember the outside. Is starting to get to uh, is starting to defrost 
and bacteria can grow on the outside even though the middle is still frozen. Another thing that's really popular is marinating. So you just remember when you're marinating something, it has to be refrigerated. So thinking about the transport of that if you are still marinating as you get to wherever you're going, um, or marinating at home and never marinating on the counter. Transporting of foods, again, keeping cold foods cold, hot foods hot, um, keeping everything as clean as possible, which is hard um, when you're outside, and then temperature is important. The other resource I gave you today is uh, a temperature guide. So again, I mentioned that a lot of people will use just color as a way to see if my food is fully cooked. And I'm not saying that you can't use color, you can. Um, but you also need to be checking temperatures as well. So if you have not invested in a, in a thermometer, I would get one. Um, so usually right around 160, 165 is where most meats are going to be safe for consumption. So obviously, as extension, we do not promote anything having any pink in it. Um, as you can see, some of the other um, temperatures do drop down a little bit. So the beef, the pork, veal, and lamb, so if it's a roast, steak, or chop, the safe internal temperature or minimum temperature is 145. Um, but then again, any ground meat, which would be your hamburgers, would be 160. And then if you drop down for leftovers, it's 165. And then for seafood, if you're doing any sort of seafood, um, they're not temperature based. They're based, again, on color or appearance. So for a burger, is the most common thing that people grill is you can certainly just grill it until it changes color, cut it open to see if it's pink inside, but we would still encourage you to check the temperature as well. And then on the back, it does say holiday food safety, which to me, summertime is a holiday. Um, and it just separated out of those four areas that we talked about, some things to remember to buy to make sure that you are um, food safe. So it just talked about, um, I just thought it was a handy list of things even to take with you as you're either camping or you're not by a kitchen, where it's just some of those things are um, ready for you to grab. Serving your food, just having an idea of how you're going to serve it, how you're going to keep it cold. Um, just to give you an example, is uh, it was years ago already, but one of my cousins got married at Wazicha in the shelter house and had no thought process of how to keep the foods cold or hot. So they came in at 10 o'clock or whenever they set up and we didn't eat until like probably two or three. And they were mayonnaise-based salads and um, it doesn't, mayonnaise is one concern, but egg-based salads, just anything, just wasn't kept cold or hot in all that time because we just didn't think about it. So remembering that it's not just you to keep safe, it's your family or anybody else that's eating your food. Leftovers, again, having some place to put your leftovers to put them away within the two hour or one hour rule. And then reheating is probably going to take place at home. Microwave is the most common way people reheat things. So again, minimum temperature of 165. I would say if you have a newer microwave and you're going just by time or you're going by sizzle, if it starts to pop or make noise as, as you reheat it, most of the time, just the way the heat comes into the microwave, it's 165. Um, so we usually just tell people to keep relying on the sound, usually that people go off of when they reheat things in a microwave. And then the last thing is there's some other handouts related to grill time. So I gave you the one for barbecue, um, it says barbecue and food safety, but there's another one for hiking and camping over there. And then handling food safety on the road. So again, if you're road tripping it, and then there's another one for prepping for potlucks and parties. And that one's a little bit different just because if you are going to someone's house and you're each bringing something, what to remember when you're planning for a potluck or a party. So it's, it's a safety guideline, but it's also kind of a planning guideline as well. And then the other thing just about grilling is uh, practicing correct food safety procedures is essential to keep everybody healthy. So uh, some people are really good at grilling and some people are really bad at grilling. So this one just talks about, it looks like the dad is bad at grilling because we're going for pizza. And then the last thing today to talk about for summertime is just kind of focusing on that colorful diet again. So we have had a couple lunch and learns about this topic already. But again, how does it kind of get affected during the summertime here in positive ways and negative ways? So planning your meals out ahead of time, that's the biggest thing. It's very hard to do in the summer because we're running to multiple events and our schedule is very much thrown off. So in the wintertime, it's really easy to keep an eight to five schedule. 
Um, and then put your, if you have young kids, put them to bed just because it's dark out. But in the summertime, it doesn't get dark until nine o'clock. There's fun activities to do outside. So we're out and about a little bit more. So keeping with planning those meals, involving the whole family. So again, if you have young kids, involving them in the cooking process, uh, having them help with certain things. If you're going camping or cooking things around the campfire, have them be involved in some of those um, practices or, you know, different activities, but within reason, obviously. The new handout that I gave you today, it's called Color My Health with Fruits and Vegetables. So it has all the different colors on it and it's grouped by um, like little shapes. Oh, good. Yeah. And what this one does is it just gives you an idea of what is in each color group. So for red, it's really easy to say, well, apple is obviously red, or cherries or cranberries. But it gave you a whole bunch of other ones that would fit into the red group that you will be seeing probably throughout the summertime just because that is our fruit and vegetable big season. And then obviously it goes all the way to uh, brown and then white and tan. So it'll just help with meal planning a little bit. It also will help you if one of your goals is to eat more fruits or vegetables or try something different. So it has lots of different things on there. Some things are in more than one color group where you'll see them repeated just because they come in multiple colors. So onion would be an example, potatoes. They'll, they'll turn up in a couple different groups. So this one just helps with the meal planning. And again, focusing on those uh, five food groups that you need and how do I uh, get those five food groups but then also be colorful at the same time. The other one is Enjoy My Plate, My Wins Local Foods Handout. So that one, again, that one is uh, not in your packet today, but it's over there, just emphasizes eating locally. So taking advantage of the CSAs, the farmers markets, the farm stands that are taking place in our community. Um, so supporting your local farmer, um, getting your fresh, your produce fresh, um, and you can off often get it the day of. So you can stop after work and get it just because there's multiple places to stop. The other one is draw out your menu. So this is an activity we often do with kids is have them draw out a meal that includes all of the five food groups, includes all their colors of the rainbow, and then have them help you make it. So it emphasizes again the food groups, the colors, but then it also teaches those learning habits of having to cook for themselves and learning some of those behaviors and habits in the kitchen that we want them to learn. And then eating colorful will help you get all the food groups. So. Again, just looking at all the different colors and all the fruits and vegetables that you get, remember that there is a huge list of vitamins and minerals that we need each and every day for our body to function. So the more colorful you eat, the more nutrients you're putting in your diet. So if you eat, tend to eat the same thing over and over and over again, you're only getting those nutrients in those foods. So if you're a mono eater, which is what we call it, where you're not incorporating new foods into your diet or new colors, you're not receiving any new nutrients. So your body is having to pull its resources from other places or sometimes body functions slow. So just remembering to eat very colorful and get all those fruits and vegetables in your diet. And to be honest, in the summertime, people tend to eat more fruits or vegetables than they do in the winter time, just because they're more readily available for us. So I also had you write down what your favorite summertime food was. So what you're looking forward to. Do we want to share? Steak on the grill. Okay. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> Fresh melon. Fresh tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes. Okay, and mine was corn on the cob. So, and corn on the cob is one thing that a lot of people think that you just have to boil it, you know, in the house and eat it or cook it that way, but you can grill it, you can do lots of different things. And there was lots of things on the internet of all the different things you can put on corn on the cob. The different seasonings, cheeses, you name it, that you can try with corn on the cob. So lots of experimenting. Um, I asked you what your favorite food was, and you all said really good things. But there's other things that come up in the summertime in Wisconsin for foods that sometimes make it really hard to do a lot of the things I talked about on the other slide. So, Fried cheese curds are really popular at the fair, or fried food in general is really popular at the fair. So I know as extension, we go to the fair all week to work in the junior fair building, and we have gotten smart, I think, is that we often share a lot of the fried food. So if 
One of us wants the cheese curds we share with multiple of us, so we're not all eating each, each you know, eating cheese curds. Or we buy the combo pack and eat all of those. So everything in moderation. But there's other things also in Wisconsin, just to be perfectly honest, a lot of things revolve around alcohol. Alcohol is present in a lot of the things that you might be attending um, or different festivals. So just remembering that too. And so sometimes things that we participate in as a fun activity or things we look forward to in Wisconsin make it really hard to do some of the things on this slide. The other thing just to remember is making half of your plates fruits or vegetables. Again, that one's a little bit easier in the summertime just because they're more available to us. And we're looking forward to having like a fresh tomato instead of having to have the store-bought ones. I always hear from people when we help them or we answer questions related to how do I can tomatoes. People often say, once I can tomatoes, I don't want to go back to the store-bought tomatoes because they taste tinny to me. I can taste that you know they've been in a can for a longer shelf life period. Making half of your grains a whole grains, um, choosing low fat or fat free dairy options. Um, we're a dairy state, so that's one that's really hard to do, and ice cream is very popular in the summertime. And then choosing a variety of proteins. So if you're really looking forward to grilling out, uh, making sure you're changing up the different proteins that you're uh, eating. So it's not always just the steak or the hamburgers, you're trying the fish, you're trying the chicken, uh, different, different protein options. And then the last thing for today is just the farmer's markets. Um, so I gave you kind of two handouts related to farmer's markets. This one is just what's in season in Wisconsin. This will help you just kind of a, as a guide of what you're going to see at the market. So we could split it even more going from, you know, month to month. So what am I seeing in June versus July versus August and September? Um, but this just kind of gives you an overall list of what you're seeing. So. Right now in our farmer's markets, asparagus, um, rhubarb, and strawberries are really popular. So the Peach Street Market just opened on Tuesday. They kind of had a washout. But the farmers that were there, they had very little produce because we're just getting started. But rhubarb and strawberries were two of the things that I did see. Salad greens was another one. Um, but then the summer, there's a whole slew. And then also fall in and into winter. So some of the things you can see that will carry in into the winter farmer's market. So there is one um, in Marshfield and then in Rapids here, it transitions into the mall, I believe, for your farmer's market. So again, just kind of helps you what you're gonna see. Um, also, the ones that are all highlighted in black is we have uh, cards related to. So the cards give you um, information about when it's in season, what to do with it. So it gives you res a recipe, it gives you meal ideas food resource management ideas, and then nutrition as well. So those are all available at the market um, or available at our office. And then the other one is just the actual farmer's markets in Wood County. So you can certainly take an atlas with you, which is um, all the north central region, but that one can be a little hard to pick out what farmer's markets are just in Wood County because it's by what city they're in. So Marshfield is listed obviously under M versus Wisconsin Rapids is listed under W. So this one just pulls out what farmer's markets are actually in Wood County. And then on the back is when we will be there as extension with our um, samples and also our information. So this month we're promoting berries a lot. So we'll have information about berries, berry samples and berry recipes for you. And then into, as we move into July, it'll change with what you see. So just things to remember at the farmer's markets is our farmer's markets obviously are not as big as Madison's farmer's markets or some of them can be, but it's still we still have pretty big markets though as well. So the festival one and also probably the Rapids one on Thursday and Saturday are our bigger ones within the county. So they have a lot to look at. They can be a little overwhelming just because a lot of them are selling the same thing. Um, so walk around, see the whole market before making purchases, then circle back. Um, to make your purchases. So kind of walking around, seeing what everybody has and then deciding where, where you're gonna buy certain things. Spread your business around. So because they often have the same things, if you're interested in multiple items, buying one from one farmer, moving on and buying something else from another farmer. Uh, just because remembering that it keeps our money local and that they can't compete with the Walmarts and the pick and saves and the IGAs. So um, just remembering to give them your business throughout the summer. Um, I talked about those two handouts already. 
And then the other things I just have for you is eating foods away from home. So going out to eat tends to be a, a bigger thing in the summertime. So things to remember related to that. Packing your snacks, so what snacks you can provide um, or have during the summertime. Building a healthy meal, having a great plate, and then meal planning for one. Just because when we work with older adults, we tend to hear that a lot is healthy eating or colorful eating is hard because I'm used to cooking for a family of five and now I'm only cooking for one. What do I do with all the extra food? So that's a resource for them to use. And then um, before questions, is just to remember to like us on Facebook. So we post upcoming classes, programs, and then we have grab and go information such as checking your credit report and lots of other things. So community events right now, we promote um, ADRC events, but then we just promoted the United We Can at the Rafters last night um, and uh, lots of other programs that are going on. So if you rely on Facebook. Um, and then do you guys have any questions for me? It was a pretty easy self-explanatory topic, so it was more just about getting you information that maybe you didn't have before and getting you to think about something else. So take the goodies with you, but then there's lots of other things too to grab um, on the side. If you don't have the atlas, take that for sure because that also emphasizes fork to cuisine, which is all the restaurants within not only Wood County but other counties that are using local foods on their menu. So, the biggest one here in Rapids would be Great Expectations, is a really good uh, promoter of local foods. There's a couple other ones. Also something else you'll see at local restaurants, it's called Smart Meals, where they are um, indicating on their menu what the smarter choices are. So if you are trying to make a healthier choice, um, what items on their menu would be lower in calories um, and higher in nutrients. So that's another thing that you'll see as you kind of make your way around Rapids. All right, well, thank you for coming. Grab your handouts as you go, and I Adam is next month, and I don't remember his topic. Sorry, I didn't look that up before I came. So, um, but Adam will be your presenter next month. So thank you, have a good day.